Hello everybody. Today we, that's Walker and I, would like to talk to you a little bit more about the current threats hammerhead sharks are facing and why the species or some of the species biological characteristics might increase its vulnerability to over exploitation. For today's video we will focus on the great hammerhead shark as this is the species that we reliably encounter during the winter months at home in Bimini, the Bahamas. Again, all the relevant literature will be cited down below in the caption of this video. Recently, great hammerhead sharks have been listed as critically endangered by the IUCN Red List. Great hammerhead sharks are caught in a variety of fisheries, either as target or bycatch species throughout their range. And as a result, substantial population declines are suspected to have happened in many areas. One reason for the great hammerhead shark's susceptibility to overexploitation is its vulnerability to mortality during the capture process. For example, in a commercial bottom set longline survey between 1994 and 2005 in the Northwest Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, it was found that nearly 94% of great hammerhead sharks were dead before they were even landed on the vessel. So this indicates that conservation strategies that target, for example, reduced soak times or prohibited landings as a standalone tool might not be effective enough to reduce this species mortality. Furthermore, great hammerhead sharks have also been found to suffer from a nearly 50% post-release mortality. So that means even if a great hammerhead shark is released alive, for example, because it has been bycatch or because it was caught in recreational catch and release fishing activities, there is no full guarantee that this shark will survive the stress it experienced during the capture. So parts of my PhD are therefore looking at the fisher interactions of great and scalloped hammerheads in the US Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, so we can discuss the efficiency of potential time area closures as an adequate conservation strategy for these two species. To answer parts of these questions, I use fin-mounted satellite transmitters. To deploy these transmitters, we have to catch um, the sharks, and are obviously facing the risks tied to their high sensitivity to capture. For us, the health and the safety of the sharks um, that we catch always comes first. And we can therefore modify established capture techniques or even come up with species specific capture protocols to minimize the stress we put on an animal during the capture. And I will hand over to Walker now, who will tell you more about what methods we use in Bimini to do so. Hey guys. So as Vital has discussed, these individuals are very susceptible to stress. So in capturing, we always make sure that animals' well-being is our top priority. To do this, we specifically prepare an experienced staff team to go out and capture a great hammerhead. Vital will prep the team on what individual we are specifically looking to catch. This could be a provisional regular or a new individual. We can tell the difference between them through the use of our ID catalog, which includes all of the previously identified hammerheads since 2013. Staff members can then identify the specific individual through characteristics such as fin notches or unusual markings. After we have chosen an individual we wish to work up, we will try to capture it using a method called polyball fishing. A polyball is a rather large buoy we attach to a long rope and then to a ganjin. Similar to the ganjins we use for long lines, but the leader is all monofilament. Since there is no wire, we double up the mono on the bottom half to prevent bite offs. We also use a slightly larger hook since the hammerheads are very powerful and larger than many of the other shark species we catch on the long lines. So you might wonder, how do we ensure the capture of the right individual if there are many animals at one location? Well. We always put one team member in the water to free dive and identify each one. Once a spotter can confirm there is an individual we wish to work up, then he or she will direct the team to getting the bait to that specific animal. Once it takes the bait, the spotter will immediately jump back into the boat while the angular will pan out line until the polyball is thrown into the water. This buoy creates resistance in the water, but allows the animal more freedom in its movements, which as a ram ventilator, this works out much better for the hammerhead species. If you compare it to a more stationary technique, such as a drumline, you can think of a 
Dog on a leash versus on a bungee cord. The bungee allows for more stretch, which creates less pressure on the animal as it pulls away. Since the animal's well-being is our top priority, we always say 15 minute limit to our workups. That is 15 minutes from the second the spotter sees an individual take the bait to the, to the shark swimming off. Even if our workup is not finished, at 12 minutes we will always start the release of the animal. Since we are in such a time crunch, we prioritize certain workup parameters depending on what information we are hoping to obtain. This means all hands on deck. The second the animal is secured next to the boat, each team member already knows his or her individual role and will get right to work. Going down the checklist, priority will always fall on the tag first, which will either be a satellite or an acoustic, then an ultrasound if it's female and mature, fin clips for DNA and isotope measurements, drawing blood, length measurements, muscle biopsy, and finally an external KC tag. Some of these measurements can be taken simultaneously to save time, and if a team member is not helping obtain data or driving the boat, he or she is helping contain the animal. One person on dorsal, another on tail, and since it is a hammerhead, we will actually devote one team member to holding the cephalofoil. So if it does decide to thrash, it cannot hurt itself. Once the workup is done or the 12 minute mark is reached, we start the release. A team member will get back into the water to watch the animal and ensure it has a strong swim off. The rest of the team will carefully fall on the boat to assist in monitor monitoring the individual's health. Once the team is satisfied with the health of the animal, we retrieve the spotter and it's time to head home. Thanks again everyone for tuning in.